Okay, today we're going to kind of review and we're going to close the gap on solving equations. So we've talked about these steps. So first of all, y'all wrote these down and if you didn't, you can pause and write them down if you want to. Um, so the first thing that we do is we distribute. Okay, there's two methods I'm going to show you for distribution. You don't have to use, there's an array method and then there's the arrow thing that y'all have always done. I'm showing you, the, I'm going to show you the array method just because it's a possibility. If you're messing this up, you can try that one, okay? So first up is always to distribute. After that, we hate fractions. So we're going to multiply by the common denominator. So say I have like one third x plus three fourths equals y. I'm going to multiply the common denominator between three and four is 12. So I'll multiply the whole thing by 12. What we'll do is we scale the equation up. And as long as I multiply the left and the right sides by it, it's going to be equivalent. So I, all I'm doing is scaling that equation up. Um, the third thing we look for is like terms to combine. And we're going to talk in a minute about like terms. The fourth thing is we get all x's on one side. Now, I like to get my x's on the left side. But like if you look at these problems here, like you see this one here, 15 equals 4m plus 5. The m's already by itself over here, so we can leave it on the right. But if we have a choice, let's get our variables on the left. Um, especially when we start to solve equations, it's easier, like inequality, sorry, it makes a lot more sense. Everything kind of works out better when it's on the left, okay? Um, we get our numbers on the other side, whatever side, we get the, our numbers on the other side, the right, and then we find 1x by dividing, okay? And I'm going to show you how to do, the, we're going to do three problems together. Now, like terms. Now, when I say no chicken mango, and I probably shouldn't be putting this on the internet, but whatever, here we are. I understand that you guys may or may not have learned um, about babies last year. So the mom and the dad, they share a special hug, and then there's a baby, right? Okay, so I'm not qualified to say anything else about it. Now, I understand that chickens and chicken, chickens and chickens, so like a chicken or like a hen and a rooster, they can get together and they can make chicken babies, right? And I don't know how plants work, but like a plant can like, like a mango tree can, can drop a mango and then the mango sprouts and then the something fertilizes it and then there's more mangoes, right? Right? Okay. But can a chicken and a mango have a baby? Can a chicken and a mango have a baby? No. No. That's a viol that's like an abomination. Uh, it's a violation of the laws of, the laws of man. The laws of nature. It's a delicious sounding abomination. I mean, mango chicken sounds really good, but um, it, that's not a thing that can be allowed to live. Okay. So, what does this mean? This means I can't put two things together that don't go together. I cannot take a plant and an animal and grow something. I can't have like five buses and two kids and put them together and have seven bus children. Like, what even is that? Like, I can't put together things that aren't the same. Exactly. You're like, what? I can't put things that aren't the same together. A chicka mango is not a thing. A mangikin, it's not a thing. I cannot put those two things together. Chickens and mangoes don't go together. So, what does this mean? Well, I can't, when I combine like terms, they have to be the same for me to put them together. First of all, a term. A term is a part of an equation separated by a plus or a minus. They have to have the same variable or combination of variables. So what do I mean by that? Right here, I've got x, 2x, and 3x. They have the same variables, x. Okay, I have x squared and negative 4x squared. They both have x squared. But these two, x and x squared, they're not like terms because they're not identical after the coefficient. So 2x and negative 4x squared, when, when I'm just looking at the x and the x squared, they're not identical, so I can't combine them. 3xy and negative 5xy, they're like terms, but 3xy and 3x, not, because the x and the xy are not identical, okay? They have to be identical after the coefficient for you to be able to combine them. And if, you, if they're not, then they're a chicken mango, and we don't do chicken mango, okay? Or mangican, whichever one you prefer, okay? You feeling okay about that? You're like, no. Everything about what just happened is wrong, but here we are. Okay, so I want to split this. I want to go to. I'm going to go to the back, and we're going to do some examples together. Okay, so basically, you're going to take your notes and you're going to open them up. And on the bottom half, we're going to do three examples. And we're going to do three examples from your homework. Okay, so um, I'm going to separate mine into like three sections because I'm just going to be honest with you. If I don't, I'm going to run out of room because that's what I do. Okay. So this is the bottom of your notes. Okay. All right. So first, let's do question number three. Okay. 
negative 9x plus 1 equals negative 80. Now, I've told you that I don't have, like, that I've been pretty, I've been pretty, like, I don't usually tell you that you have to use a specific process, but I'm going to tell you right now your work should look almost exactly like mine for equations, okay? And, I mean, that's my homework. Your homework should look almost exactly like mine because we're learning a process, and that process is the process of solving equations. Again, we're closing the gap on how to solve equations. We're going to be doing a lot of stuff to manipulate equations going forward, and we have to make sure that we have this, these steps down. We want our work to be organized because if we make a mistake, we want to be able to see where it is, and we want to be constantly reinforcing these processes. Okay, so some of these things that I do, you don't have to, you, I don't actually do them, but I used to. And while, until you are really solid, you need to do them too. Okay, so the first thing is I draw a line through my equal sign. The reason I do this is because when I get to combining like terms, I cannot combine across the equal sign, and this wall being in the middle kind of keeps me from accidentally doing that. It also helps me realize what I'm, so when I say both sides, both sides of what? Both sides of this wall that I just made down the middle of my equal sign, okay? So this tells me where the two sides of my equation are when I draw that line right down the middle, okay? So now we're gonna look at the steps, okay? The first step says distribute, but I don't see any parentheses, so there's nothing to distribute, so I'm done with step one. Step two says we hate fractions, but I don't see any fractions, so we're done with step two, okay? Step three says combine like terms, okay? So I'm gonna look right here. Do I have anything that I can combine there? No, because that's a chicken and that's a mango. I cannot, they don't, they don't look identical after the, in fact, this one doesn't even, it's not even a coefficient, that's a constant, okay? So I cannot combine these with anything. Okay, they don't go together. And then I can't combine that because there's only one thing, nothing to combine. All right? So now the next step is get all my x's on one side of the equal sign. Are all of them, yes? Can you like put a positive hmm? down We're going to get there. We're going to get there, okay? So are all of my x's on one side of the equal sign? Yeah, there's only one x and it's over there, so it's, well, it's on its by its own. But are all my numbers on one side of the equal sign? No. So this is where I'm going to start. So the, the thing with the dance, where you showed me a you showed me a dance move, you showed me how to will badly. Um, you showed me that move, which I still can't figure out how to do. And then um, so you said, okay, you got to do that. So this is you over here showing me, and this is me following your instruction. Okay, this is the instructions and this is me following them. What a lot of times when you guys solve equations, you only give me this side of the equation. I need to not only know what you did, I need to know why you did it. And this is why you did it. Do you see what I'm saying? So we have to do both sides. We have to do the person giving the instructions and the person following them, okay? So these, the one and the negative one zero away, leaving me with negative nine X. Any leftovers come straight down. So that comes straight down. The equal sign comes straight down. Negative 80 and negative 1 is negative 81, okay? Now, I've got x's on one side and numbers on the other. So now I look, my next step is to find 1x by dividing, okay? So if I want this x by itself, I divide by what's in front of it, negative 9, okay? My negatives and my 9's cancel, leaving behind an x. My negatives cancel. 81 divided by 9 is 9. And that's my answer. That's what your work should look like. Okay? Huh? 9 slash what? The line through the equal sign? Yeah. Yeah? If you don't need to put the line, that's fine. But if you start making mistakes and combining across the equal signs, I'm going to ask you to put it back in. Again, like, I don't usually put the line in there. I also don't usually, sorry, I think I had, I was supposed to circle this. I don't usually circle these things, as you can see. But, and I don't usually do the lines through stuff. But I don't have to anymore. 
until you're getting everything right consistently, I want you to do it, okay? But if you don't need to do it, you know when you don't need to do it anymore. If you're getting the right answer every time without it, then you don't need to do it anymore. But, but still, even if all you have is all these numbers written, they need to be written like this. See what I'm saying? If you didn't put the Z through there, circle that, cross those things off, put the, that's fine. But you need to have these steps shown, okay? Let's look at number two. Huh? It's okay, you can grab another one. Okay, number two. 2w two plus 10 minus 8w equals negative 38. Okay? So now when I look at this one, again, I'm just going to go through. I don't see any parentheses, so there's nothing to distribute. I don't see any fractions, so there's nothing to do there. Now, do I have any like terms to combine? Yeah, yeah I got two w's. Now, let's think about this. Does anybody have trouble figuring out where the terms are, like how to break them apart? Okay, I have a strategy that I use. It's really easy. So what I do is I put a wall in front of every plus or minus. So I'm literally just going to put up a wall right there between the pluses, in front of the plus, in front of the minus. Now my terms are broken up. I have 2w, positive 10, negative 8w. Okay? So if you just put a wall in front of every plus or minus, it's going to separate your terms out for you. Now I have this 2w and this negative 8w. Now notice I said 2w and negative 8. What does and mean in math? means add, okay? So, I'm going to, if I need to, I'm going to put this in my calculator. Now, I'm not going to put the W. I'm just going to put the coefficient. So, I'm going to say 2 and negative 8, which is, whoopsie, negative 6. So, I have negative 6 W's plus 10 equals negative 38. And now we dance, Okay. I want to get this negative 6w by itself. So what do I have to do? I have to subtract 10. So I'm going to subtract 10. Okay. Okay. Negative 6w equals negative 48. All right. Now I want to get this w by itself. Step 6 says I divide by whatever's in front of the variable, the coefficient. My negative 6's cancel away. I'm left with W. My negatives cancel here. 48 divided by 6 is 8. And there's my answer. What do we think? Okay, is it coming back to you a little bit? And if it's not, that's okay. We're practicing it. Okay? We're practicing it ahead of time so that, you know, we're ready for whatever happens. All right? Last one I want to do is number 4. These three problems, you don't have to do, you don't have to rewrite them in your notes or anything like that. They're already in your notes. You don't need to do them again. We've already done them, okay? All right, so let's look at number four. Now, number four is two parentheses, r plus five equals negative two. Okay, distribution right there because I see parentheses. Now, I'm going to show you two ways to distribute, all right? So let's look at the first one. The first one, two r plus 5, okay? The first one is probably what you're familiar with, which is where you draw the arrows. 2 times r is 2r. 2 times 5 is positive 10, okay? That's an r, okay? This one you might, you're probably familiar with. Now, let me show you this other one. Let me find this example, okay? This other one is called, it's an array method. Okay, and an array is where we put stuff in boxes, okay? Some of you are going to be like, oh my gosh, Mrs. Dale, we did this in like second grade. That's okay. We're going to do it again this year. All right? So I have two, one, one term multiplied by two terms. So I make a one by two box. That one goes out here. The R plus five goes there. Notice I put the plus with the term it goes with. The five went with the plus is five, okay? 2 times r is 2r. 2 times positive 5 is positive 10. Now let me show you why. Okay, so a lot of some people might think it's easier the first way, but there's a lot of mistakes people make when they do it the first way. One of the first one of the mistakes that people make is they distribute to the first term, but they forget to distribute to the second term. That's my biggest mistake that I make. Also, when there's signs like negatives, things start to get real crazy. Okay, so 
Let me show you an example of why that when this method is pretty useful. So let's try this. And you don't have to write this one down if you don't want to. So negative 2 times 3x minus 4. I'm not done, by the way. Okay. So if I put this in a box, I have negative 2 on the outside, 3x, and minus 4. Now, two, negative 2 times 3 is negative 6x. Negative 2 times negative 4 is positive 8. Okay. Commonly, what will happen is you'll go 2 times negative 4 is negative 8 and forget that that's a negative 2 times negative 4. You see what I'm saying? So if, you're, if you find yourself making sign errors or you find yourself forgetting to distribute to the second term, try, the, try that array method and see if it works. Okay. So we already solved this. We already did this. So it was 2r plus 10 equals negative 2. All right. I need to get this 2r by itself. So what do I do? I do what? Okay, let me see if somebody else can hear it. What do I do? I subtract 10. So I'm going to subtract 10 on both sides. Sorry, I, I know you know. Somebody else needs to pick up the question answering. So my 2r comes down, my equal sign comes down, my negative 12. Okay, now what do I do? I divide by what? 2. And I get r equals negative 6. Now, the last thing I want to show you, and we don't have much time, so let me show you really quick. Okay? Let's look at this first problem here. I'm going to show you how to check in the calculator, and it's really easy. And if you had, I don't know, like a beginning of your assessment coming up and you had multiple choice questions, this might be a way to answer those questions pretty easily. Okay. Huh? Okay, let me, let me show everybody else how to do it, okay? So what you're going to do is, and y'all don't have to highlight this. I'm just doing it so you can kind of see a little bit better. We take the left side of the equal sign and we put it in Y1. We take the right side of the equal sign and put it in Y2. Now, this is in your calculator guide, okay? So on the left side, I'm going to put negative 9X plus 1. On the right side, I'm going to put negative 80 because that's what I had in my equation. Now, what sign is between them? Equal, right? They have an equal sign between them, right? Okay, so I'm expecting, I want my y1 and my 2 to be equal. So I'm going to do second graph to get into my table. I think the answer is 9. So I'm going to scroll down to 9. Are y1 and y2 equal? Yes. Then this is the answer. So how are you going to prove that you checked it that way? You're literally just going to make x, y1, y2, and you're going to copy that row. 9, negative 80, negative 80. X equals 9 is my answer, and I checked it. If you have a multiple choice question, you could do them all that way. Okay? Now, for class, though, I expect you to show me the work because we're practicing this process. We're trying to get better at sol actually solving equations.